I, in a sense, have been the anthropologist from Mars. I've been trying to understand extraordinary people like these. Albert Einstein, the, the great physicist uh, who changed our understandings of time and space. Pablo Picasso, the, the painter who introduced with Brock the practice of cubism and, of course, had many other phases of influential work. T.S. Eliot, the American-British poet best known for his wasteland poem of the 20s. Igor Stravinsky, a composer as revolutionary in his way as Eliot and Picasso were with their materials. A little hint here in the appearance, this is Martha Graham, uh, perhaps the chief founder of uh, modern dancing. Now, some people think this is Ben Kingsley, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, it's, of course, Gandhi who innovated in the ways in which human beings understand and relate to one another. Sigmund Freud, the great psychologist and psychoanalyst. Virginia Woolf, one of the main vessels of modernism and especially known for her stream of consciousness writing. Going back a little earlier, but one of my personal favorites, Mozart, doesn't need any kind of descriptor. Darwin, from the 19th century, unequaled naturalist and theorist. And you see it here in the first row, three individuals who were extremely important in the history of the first part of the century Stalin from the Soviet Union, Roosevelt from the United States, and Churchill from Great Britain, the leaders of the Allies during the Second World War. Recently, I wrote a book called Extraordinary Minds, where I focused on four of them. I had an earlier book called Creating Minds, where I studied the seven individuals who, in my judgment, were the most important creators of the modern era. And then in subsequent work, I took a look at 21 leaders from the 20th century, 10 of them in considerable depth. Well, what would the naturalist, what would the anthropologist, what would the explorer discover about these human beings if she or he began to study them systematically? Well, they might want to talk to traditional scholars, to psychologists in particular, and ask them what do they think about these uh, very tall puppies. And one answer is the, the bell curve, or IQ answer, which is that people are distributed on a single trait, namely how smart they are. And if you're lucky enough to be very smart, if you're lucky enough to be on the right side of the bell curve, you can do most anything. You have a large general horsepower which you can use in whichever way you like. That's one answer to the question of extraordinariness. Another answer comes from behaviorists, from uh, B.F. Skinner. And the behaviorists have quite a different view. They think you can make anyone into anything. If you shape their environment sufficiently, you give them enough rewards at the right time, enough punishments at the right time, and you will eventually get them to be quite extraordinary. These are the classical answers you would get from psychology, but I think neither of them is adequate. In fact, I might even say that both the bell curve IQ answer and the Skinnerian behaviorist answer is wrong. I want to ask, and to the best of my ability to answer, seven questions about extraordinary creators, leaders, geniuses. First of all, how can we study these individuals? Second, are they born or are they made? Third, what's their childhood like? Fourth, what's the relationship between creators like Einstein and Picasso and leaders like Stalin or Hitler or Roosevelt or Margaret Thatcher? Fifth, if you are in the world of an extraordinary individual, what role can you play in that person's life? Sixth, what role are they likely to play in your life? How are they going to likely to relate to you? And seventh, and I suppose a question which we all have in the back of our mind, what can the rest of us, whether we are Martians or anthropologists or psychologists or just ordinary folks, what can we learn from these extraordinary 
examples.